Hello and welcome to this lecture in marketing management. In this lecture, we are going to talk about channel design and channel management decisions. And we are also going to discuss about channel conflict. So, let me take you through this lecture by changing the slides and explaining each with suitable examples. So, here we are going to take our first slide of this lecture. Now, the first slide of the lecture talks about the meaning of channel design. So, we have uh, till now discussed about the distribution channel. Now, a distribution channel is a series of organizations and individuals that help in the movement of a product from the manufacturer to the consumer. So, a distribution channel is uh, set up by the manufacturer followed by the distributor followed by the wholesaler followed by the retailer followed by the consumer. So, in a typical distribution channel, there are certain entities, there are certain independent organizations as well as individuals. Uh, some of the organizations are very prominent like uh, we have the distributor, the wholesaler as well as the retailer, while certain organizations are not so prominent which are uh, in a way hidden uh, like the transporters, the warehouse owners, the inventory uh, keepers, etcetera. So, it, they together make uh, a distribution channel. So, channel design basically refers to the decisions involving in the development of the new marketing channel. So, whatever decisions which are involved in the development of a new marketing channel are basically uh, referred to the decisions of the channel design. Channel design is basically the design of the channel. Now, how to make the channel, how to uh, construct the channel for a particular product or a particular product category. So, this refers to the creation of new channels where none existed before and it also refers to the modification of existing channel. So, channel design also refers to uh, the creation of new channels as well as the modification of the existing ones. Uh, channel design are critical because they impact the market presence of a product. Now, as we know that in order to achieve successful sales, a product has to be available in the market at the right place, at the right time, in the right quantity and at the right price. So, the channel design is largely responsible for this. Uh, with a proper channel design, uh, the product can be made available in the market at the right place, at the right time, in the right quantity and at the right price. While with an improper strategy, uh, there would be problems and the product would not be available to the consumers at the right place, quantity, uh, time and price and this would give rise to many problems for the manufacturer. So, it is easier to change and this one last point is extremely important uh, with respect to channel design. Now, it is not very easy to change the channel structure. So, while it is easy to change the price and it is easy to change the promotion. Uh, the channel structure cannot be very easily changed and because it cannot be very easily changed, therefore, the organizations must uh, pay a lot of attention and the organizations must be very careful while designing their uh, distribution channel. So, while take, taking the decisions related to distribution channel, the organizations must take into account a number of factors and they must do so very diligently because it is easier to change the price and it is easier to change uh, the promotions etcetera, but not the channel which is relatively rigid in all the uh, marketing mix elements. Now, we talk about certain dimensions of the channel design. So, as I said that the channel design is basically uh, related to all the decisions which are uh, taken in order to construct either a new marketing channel or to modify an existing marketing channel. So, in this perspective, there are certain dimensions of a channel design. Let me read out these dimensions first. It includes the market uh, dimensions, then there are certain product dimensions, and there are certain company dimensions, then there are certain intermediary dimensions as well as the environment dimensions. So, market dimensions are all those decisions which are taken in respect to the market. So, decisions taken with respect to the type of market or the nature of market are the market dimensions. So, if suppose the market is full of competitors, if it is a highly competitive market, then the company can adopt a different type of channel strategy and the decisions would be then 
uh, covered under this dimension. So, market uh, dimension covers the all the decisions which are taken after looking at the nature of the market. Then there are some product dimensions, product dimensions are related to the product or the offering of the company which the company is taking towards uh, the consumer. So, this includes the nature of the product, whether the product is a durable product or whether it is a perishable product, whether it is FMCG, whether it is consumer durable, electronic gadget or uh, it is it is uh, an eatable of what exactly the product is. So, this covers the all the aspects of the offering which is being taken to the market and these are the product dimensions. Then there are the certain company dimensions, company dimensions are the organizational dimensions. So, while creating uh, a marketing channel from scratch or while modifying an existing marketing channel, there are certain organizational dimensions which are taken care of. Uh, this includes the uh, presence of the organization in the market, the market share, what types of consumers uh, the organization is having etcetera. So, these are the organizational dimensions. Then there are certain intermediary, intermediaries are various organizations that facilitate the movement of the product. So, we have defined intermediaries in the last slides also that intermediaries are the organizations that uh, facilitate the movement of the product from the producer to the consumer. So, intermediary dimension is about the types of intermediaries that the organization is interested to keep while constructing the marketing channel. So, depending on the reach of the market, depending on the nature of the product, depending on the nature of the consumer, uh, depending on the nature of uh, the objectives, the marketing objectives of the organization, uh, the organization would be interested in keeping certain intermediaries while it would not be interested in keeping certain other intermediaries. So, this is the intermediary dimension. While the environment dimension is concerned with marketing environment. So, the type of marketing environment both internal as well as external which is prevailing at that given point of time that is covered in the marketing dimension. So, therefore, the dimensions of uh, channel design consists of the market, product, company, intermediary and environment dimension. Now, next we move to the process of channel design. So, a channel design is a complex process, it is a lengthy and time taking process which involves five major steps. Now, these five major steps are number one defining the customer's needs. So, everything starts with the customer and the organization has to first of all understand and define in very clear cut terms as to what their customers actually require. So, defining the need or understanding the need is the first step here. Uh, the second step is defining the channel objectives. So, there can be channel objectives, various channel objectives. Uh, to create awareness, to maximize the profit, to maximize uh, the revenue, to maximize the market share and such that uh, there can be different types of objectives. So, the company has to define what are the various objectives. So, there can be an objective of maximizing profits or let us say maximizing market share. So, whatever the company is aiming at the company or the organization has to define in very clear terms whatever the company or the organization is aiming at. Then there are certain alternatives which are taken into consideration. So, a very simple example can be taken like there can be an offline channel and there can be an online channel. So, if the company goes for an offline channel, it means that the company will have to set up stores and if the company is talking about online channel, then the company will have to adopt the model of e-commerce. So, these are the two basic decisions that the company has to take I and mean, the company has to either go for an offline channel or an online channel or a mix of offline and online. 
So, uh, to sum up the company has to decide about the channel alternatives, I mean it has to look at the various alternatives available and after that the company can decide on to which alternative is most suitable or which are the alternatives which are most suitable to it uh, depending upon its financial condition and depending upon the nature of the product and the nature of the market and whatever the consumers are expecting from the company. Then after the consideration of various channel alternatives what happens is evaluation of the major channel alternatives. In the evaluation the company looks for the most suitable the company compares the various alternatives which are available to it and then the company goes for those alternatives which are most suitable to its own standing and then finally the channel structure is set up and this channel structure is then populated with suitable intermediaries so that the channel can be finally established. So, these are the various steps which are uh, constituting the process of channel design uh, starting with defining the consumer needs goes on to the channel objectives then considering various alternatives which can which the company can use and then finally, evaluating and deciding on a particular uh, one or two or more than two alternatives which are most suitable for the company and then finally, setting up the suitable channel structure. Channel management decision and are there certain basic uh, issues which are there with the channel management decision. Now, at every step there are dilemmas, at every step a decision has to be made, at every step there is a choice which is encountered while setting up a marketing channel. So, the company has to consider these choices and then it has to take a careful look at the options and then evaluate the options and move on with the most suitable options that it can have. So, the various types of dilemmas or rather issues are first issue is direct or indirect channels. So, the first dilemma is that whether the company should approach the consumers directly through its sales force or the company should put up an indirect channel through various other intermediaries. So, this is the dilemma number 1 or rather the issue number 1. Then another dilemma or another issue comes up with single or multiple channels. So, whether the company should set up a single a particular channel or whether the company should go for a multi channel strategy or a hybrid channel strategy. So, this is another issue that is encountered by the organization and it has to take decision regarding this. So, single or multiple channels. Now, in case of multiple channels we can simply say that uh, it always has a choice. Now, in 21st century any company has to decide whether to keep itself offline or whether it should also go online. So, this is a very simple model of uh, the dilemma that is encountered and if it goes offline then what are the various formats that it can look into while if it is goes online it can use a website or it can also use an app or a combination of website and app. So, these are the uh, dilemmas which are encountered in this point as to whether there should be a single channel or whether the company should follow a multiple channel strategy. Then the next dilemma that is encountered is about the length of the channel. Here we can also say that this is about the level of the channel. So, the length of the channel is actually directly related to the number of intermediaries which are involved in the channel and if the company is uh, willing to keep the length short then it might not involve any intermediary and it might go for a direct marketing channel where, where it offers the product directly to the consumer. While uh, if it talks about uh, uh, a level 1 channel it can include a retailer in between uh, producer and the consumer while if it talks about a level 2 channel. Uh, the length can be further increased and it can include a distributor and a retailer or a wholesaler and a retailer between itself and the consumer. While in case it is willing to elongate the channel further, it can include three intermediaries such as wholesaler, the distributor, the wholesaler as well as the retailer. So, the channel length increases and at the end one end the, there is the producer, at the other end there is the consumer and then there are three intermediaries in form of uh, this. Uh, uh, distributor, wholesaler and retailer. So, a typical long channel consists of the manufacturer, then this is followed by a distributor, then this is followed by a wholesaler, this is followed by a retailer 
and at the end or other end there is the consumer that is waiting for the product so this decision is about including which intermediary to include and which intermediary to exclude now retailer cannot be excluded or if it is excluded then in that case the manufacturer itself becomes the retailer and reaches out to the consumer directly other types of intermediaries uh, is a decision which is to be taken the what types of intermediaries are to be kept and which are to be uh, deleted or which are to be eliminated and the number of intermediaries at each level so if we talk about the level of distributor then how many distributors exactly if uh, we talk about the wholesalers then how many wholesalers exactly and if we talk about the retailers then how many retailers and how many wholesalers and how many distributors exactly the company has to go for so if we if we see it like this then uh, we can see a vertical system which comprises of the producer and the consumer and in between there are intermediaries while there is a horizontal system also wherein there are intermediaries at the each level so the company has to decide how many intermediaries should it involve at uh, a particular given level so this is about channel management decision the basic issues then the various types of channel management decisions that the company has to make are first of all selection of channel members so this is uh, a very important and a very crucial step because the success of the channel depends on the uh, type of the channel members and how Uh, the channel members uh, will uh, respond to the particular channel so selection of channel members is the starting point and it is also a very crucial step and this is followed by the training of channel members so if the particular distributor is there then the distributor has to be taught about the product it has to be given the product knowledge it has to be given the knowledge of the types of consumers who are purchasing the product so that the distributor can efficiently sell the product in the market and it can also have an understanding about the kind of consumer and the kind of product it is selling so this type of knowledge and training about the market about the consumer about the product etc has to be given to the channel member by the organization now after training the channel member the next decision comes about motivating the channel member so once a channel member is uh, trained uh, it is very important to motivate that channel member because with the passage of time it is extremely important to keep the channel members motivated because there is competition in the market and if the channel members feel demotivated then this will also impact the sale of the product in the market so in order to boost the sale up and in, in order to uh, keep the sales going up uh, the channel members or the intermediaries have to be motivated and then constantly they have to be evaluated or uh, i should say they have to be reviewed from time to time so the performance of the channel members have to be reviewed from time to time and then those channel members who are not able to perform are then eliminated and new channel members are brought in and those who are very well performing channel members are suitably rewarded and depending on the performers or non performance uh, there is modification in the channel members so modification actually means the exclusion or inclusion of new channel members so this is about that so the non performing channel members are excluded while the performing ones are included so channel management decisions uh, go on like this now we come to channel integrated system so we have two types of integrated systems we have a vertical marketing system as well as a horizontal marketing system now if we talk about the vertical marketing system the vertical marketing system is defined as it comprises of the producer distributor wholesaler and the retailer as independent entities with each trying to maximize their own profits so we can visualize the vertical marketing system as something like this so there is a manufacturer here then we have a distributor which is then followed by a wholesaler which is then followed by a retailer and down the line we have the consumer so this is the vertical marketing system where there are so many entities such as the distributor wholesaler and retailer and all these entities the encircled ones all these encircled entities are trying to maximize their profits independently so they are basically behaving as independent organizations which they actually are and each of them is trying to maximize their profits now when we come to horizontal uh marketing system or in abbreviation we call it hms 
Now, two or more unrelated companies put together to exploit emerging marketing opportunity. So, it means that at a particular level, there can be two or more entities. So, let, let us assume that there is a manufacturer which has given the task of distribution to two distributors D1 and D2 in a particular city or in a particular state. So, it means that at the level of distributor, there are not one but two distributors who are there at the same level. So, these are two or more unrelated companies which are put together and these are put together to exploit an emerging marketing opportunity which is offered by the manufacturer. Further, let us assume that this distributor D1 has got three wholesalers and the distributor D2 has got two wholesalers. So, we have got three wholesalers. Uh, w1, w2 and w3 and here we have two wholesalers w4 uh, and w5. So, it means at the level of this wholesalers there are not one but five wholesalers which are operating here. So, the distributors have been two which are followed by five wholesalers and each of the wholesalers would give their product to a different set of retailers. So, there would be let us say 15 or 20 retailers. So, at each level there are certain number of entities who are independent of each other, but they are trying to exploit a particular marketing opportunity. So, this, this is this is what is making the horizontal marketing system while this model is making the vertical marketing system wherein there are various levels and uh, a certain category of intermediaries are occupying a particular level. So, this is what we mean by channel integrated system which is divided into vertical marketing system and horizontal marketing system. Now, we move to meaning of channel conflict. So, uh, channel conflict, now conflict is defined as dispute, conflict is defined as an unwanted situation in a particular uh, uh, sequence. So, there is an activity happening and if, if that activity is accompanied by some unwanted situation or some dispute occurs between the members. Uh, then that is actually called uh, conflict. So, in channel also there can be conflicts. So, let me define the channel conflict by saying that channel conflict can be explained as any dispute, difference or discord which is arising between two or more channel partners. So, there can be two distributors and those distributors can be in conflict with each other or a distributor can be in conflict with the wholesaler or there can be two or more retailers which can be in conflict or a retailer can have a conflict with the wholesaler and the retailer can have a conflict with the, uh, the, uh, the wholesaler or two wholesalers can also or more wholesalers can also be in a conflict. So, conflict situation can arise throughout the channel anywhere between any number of channel partners at any level. It arises in cases where one partner's activities or operations affect the business, the sales, the profitability and market share or similar goal accomplishment of the other channel partners. So, only when there is a conflict of interest, only when there are uh, losses because of certain other partners, only in those situations uh, the conflicts come into play. Normally, there are no conflicts, but conflicts can arise because of uh, certain situations where the uh, profitability or uh, the market share or goal accomplishment or something. Uh, similar of one partner is impacted by the activities and the decisions of the other partner. So, in that case uh, the, the channel conflict can come into play. Now, there are two types of channel conflicts, they can be vertical channel conflicts as well as uh, horizontal channel conflicts. For this we will have to again go back to uh, vertical marketing system and horizontal marketing system. So, vertical channel conflicts are basically taking place at different levels. So, if a conflict arises between a distributor and a wholesaler or if a conflict arises between the wholesaler and the retailer or if the conflict arises between the distributor and the wholesaler, then that will be called as a vertical marketing conflict because it is arising between uh, two levels, different levels in a distribution channel. While horizontal marketing conflict is the conflict that arises at the same level. So, here we have the manufacturer followed by two distributors. Now, these two distributors are at the same level and if a conflict arises between these two distributors on profit sharing or discount offered, then this will be called as a horizontal marketing conflict because this is arising at the same level. Similarly, we have got five wholesalers here. 
so if any of the two wholesalers or more than two wholesalers are in a conflict with each other then there will be called as a horizontal marketing conflict so vertical marketing conflict arises at different levels while horizontal marketing conflict arises at the same level of the distribution channel so this is to be very much understood now there can be certain causes of channel conflict now what can be the causes of channel conflict so one of the prime cause of channel conflict is goal incompatibility suppose there is a channel partner p1 and there is a channel partner p2 the goal is something else while for p2 the goal is something else now this goal incompatibility can be a uh, can be a cause of uh, conflict so here i would like to give the example of flipkart now flipkart was earlier uh, distributing its products through a third party distributor Uh, the vision of flipkart was that the product must reach the consumer within 2 days while such was not the vision of the third party distributor so now here there were separate goals the company had the goal of making the product available to the consumers within 2 days while the physical distributor the third party uh, the outsourced uh, uh, party was there no such vision was there so because of the uh, goal uh, displacement certain kind of uh, a uh, conflict must have come into play and then after this conflict when this conflict was realized by flipkart uh, flipkart uh, established its own distribution company called ecart so because of the goal incompatibility conflicts arise then there can be unclear roles uh, there can be role of there can be a certain role ambiguity i should say or there can be uh, confusions related to the goals so whenever a manufacturer hires a channel partner that channel partner must be explained the goal and therefore the training is a must so the channel partner should be given a goal related training and the channel partner should be made the role extremely clear as to what is expected from that channel partner in the channel so if there are uh, if there if the things are left unsaid then this will contribute to the conflict then resistance to change the technology is changing and the channel partner should also be adaptable to the technology if they are resistant to change then channel conflict will arise and if there are too many partners serving too few customers so if there are uh, at the same level if there are so many intermediaries and they are serving very few customers then there would be a rush for customers and there would be a rush for discounts and this rush for customers and rush for discounts would then uh, you know it will contribute to a lot of channel conflict and there can be strategic or marketing disalignment so such marketing misalignment or strategic misalignment can also be a cause of uh, channel conflict so these things must be avoided in order to avoid any kind of channel conflict uh, resolution of channel conflict or resolution is also very important because channel conflict often gives rise to losses and it 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 gives rise to tensions between the partners which is not good for the distribution channel so there should be cooperation among the distribution channel cooperation will come with a lot of communication so communication channels must be open the communication lines must be open uh, mediation so any strong channel partner can come and uh, it should act as a intermediary it should act as a pacifier and it should act as a, a resolution it should provide a solution to the conflict between various partners then diplomacy diplomacy is about talks it is about communication and it is about creating a win win situation so such win win situation can be created in order to come out of the conflict then arbitration arbitration is very much similar to uh, mediation and co option co option is very much similar to cooperation so things can be the resources can be shared the resources can be used jointly and co option can be done so uh, with the resolution of channel conflict uh, i come to the end of this lecture uh, my name is ashish avasti and my email id is ashishishashish.awasthi at the rate imsec.ac.in uh, for any queries you can mail your questions to me and i'll be more than happy to reply you back thank you so much